Hey guys, I'm just another engineer, and welcome back to some more Turbo Snail construction. So last time we got some of the basic opcodes down. Uh, this time we're going to be doing addition, subtraction, and jumping. So you can see there I've painted out the um, what is it? The instruction uh, multiplexer or something. I forget exactly what I've called these things. Uh, take that into an AND gate with the first step, and we're doing addition. So I need to get the instruction register address out so I know which memory address I'm taking it from. Uh, getting RAM read so I can take the address, uh, put it into the RAM, and then take out whatever information there is. And then I'm going to be saving it to address B. Uh, now on that second one there, or on that second gate that's connected up to the second blue on the step counter, that is going into... Um, what is it? It's going into output adder and then also into register A in. So it's going to output the adder and then uh, on the rising edge or uh, whatever the delayed rising edge is, it's going to tick into that register. Uh, here I'm writing a program to be able to test it. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this, of course. It's been a month or so, maybe two. Uh, so I'm pretty slow with this, but I do get the hang of it after a while. Um, and this this session, I'd say, is a bit interesting. Uh, so first of all here, doesn't work. Um, for the most part, I actually get these things right. It's just all the past stuff was sort of flawed, which messed up everything here. So uh, we'll see take me a while to figure this out, but what happened was I forgot to connect up some of the things from the instruction selector demultiplexer to all the AND gates, so the save A, save B, save C, and save D were all going off at the same time, which was really messing stuff up. Don't know how I didn't notice that before, uh, but here I'm actually putting in a terminate command so that the program doesn't run on. And then here, I've noticed that there is a broken bit. Um, not thinking, I go and reset it. Uh, then I realize that's not how this memory works, and it turns out it's actually because I forgot to connect up the actual write pin to this memory cell. So as you can see here, it is very, very, very messy, and I cannot find it for the life of me, so I need a post. And even with a post, cannot connect it. There's one failed attempt, didn't hear the sound of it connecting. And there's two failed attempts, now I'm looking for where the actual hitbox is because I cannot see anything there and actually hear the connect sound, so now it's connected and it stopped flashing, and of course because I actually broke that cell, disconnect it and reconnect it. So yeah, I really hope that I don't find anything else in the future that's as broken as that. Uh, well that wasn't really too broken, I just had to connect up one pin. Um, not exactly sure what I'm doing here, but all right, so now I'm going to be getting some lights in so I can actually see what's going on in register B. Take a while to connect that up. Da -da. Come on. There we go, done connecting that up. We're going to run it again. Let's see, it loads up. The second one, but it doesn't actually load up the first one, and that's because the very first instruction got corrupted. Uh, at this point, I'm not exactly sure what's even going on. It's the first time in many months that I've actually been back to this, so there we go. Loads up 5, loads up 10, and it doesn't work. So I go over here, frantically looking at what's actually happening. And again, looking at what's been connected. Go and hit run. And I think I notice here that it hasn't been properly connected. Oh, right. There, I've just reset the whole thing. Uh, just to try and make sure that I'm actually entering things incorrectly. There we go, and run it. And this is where I notice that RAM right is being constantly turned on. So I realize the only thing that that comes from is those second guys up there. Uh, so reconnect those, and I actually did this wrong. 
Somehow it didn't mess me up on this one, but it did mess me up on the jump. So the jump actually took me about an hour to figure out, because it's very hard to decode these things when you have no idea what's actually going on, and there's like 10 different moving parts. Uh, yeah, there we go. That worked finally. Uh, now we're doing subtraction, which should be pretty easy, because it's the exact same thing, it's just addition instead. Or, uh, sorry, instead of addition, you're doing subtraction uh, with the uh, control word. So that should be fairly easy. Yeah, I spent about an hour trying to make um, jump work, but jump never really wanted to work, so I'm actually going to go and do that live, so to speak, because otherwise I would be talking over like 10 times time lapse, which isn't exactly fun. Uh, yeah, paint that up, reset everything, then put in the subtract command. Uh, guess I messed something up, put in the terminate command. And now I get to pick the numbers. They do eight, actually nine. Uh, so then 8 minus 9, or sorry, 9 minus 8, run that, go over there, and it works first try. Did you look at that? So then up here, I'm just showing I am getting rid of multiplication. I'm not doing multiplication. That's not fun. Uh, so yeah, painting this to show that we're completed. And here we are now, live in the actual world while recording it. Um, I, I really don't like to do this because, you know, you can hear my keyboard and mouse, but hopefully I can keep this short. Uh, so, first thing we need to do when we get in here is reset that and everything goes like that and then hold it down just to make sure that nothing's flashing. Uh, and then here all the registers are on, so just reset that. So, right here the difference is these three blocks. First of all, I noticed that this wasn't actually the load command being two parts, this was actually the load command being one part, and then up there is the actual reset. So this goes over here into this gate, which increments this guy and resets this guy. And then, uh, or sorry, I probably shouldn't be calling it this guy and this guy. Uh, this is the step counter. This is, no, that's the uh, brain. Uh, this, this is the step counter, step demultiplexer. This is, oh boy, I have the document. It says exactly what it is. Uh, instruction register, right, uh, no. That's the instruction register. Whatever this is, it tells you which position in RAM, so it, it increments it, and then uh, resets that guy. So that's what that block's doing there. Since this is a two-step, first it has to load into B, then add A and B, or subtract A and B. This actually becomes three, and then this third one goes to reset. Uh, right, instruction counter, instruction counter, instruction register. Um, <laughs> sorry, my brain is all over the place today. Um, and then right in here, this is the lonely little jump command, because this is actually extremely simple. All it does is come over here, uh, hopefully I can remember which one this is. Um, right, so this is, uh, instruction register address out, so that outputs, uh, this half of the address. Or sorry, this half of the instruction, which is the address and that outputs that to, uh, not exactly sure how that actually gets into there. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Oh wait, oh, didn't even need to output that. I literally just have to tell that, okay, yeah, that, that makes this a bit easier. So I'll just disconnect that guy because that is the output. So yeah, that's just hardwired. All I have to do is get an input. So yeah, this uh, this literally just tells that thing to take an input, so this becomes a new thing. And then instead of it going to here, which would increment that and reset that, which is a horrible idea, because then it's gonna be the jump location plus one. Instead, it just goes into here, into this timer for timing sakes, which I'm pretty sure this doesn't even need to exist. Uh, and then that goes straight into the reset right here, which will reset this, and then it'll go to there, uh, which is spare, and then um, load and all that stuff. Um, yeah, and it'll load stuff into the uh, 
instruction register and then continue on as normal. So I will actually go right here and paint that as green. I'm actually gonna go and pull up the uh, spreadsheet or not the, not the spreadsheet, the text document that has all of the instructions or the ops codes and I'm gonna get that so that I can actually confidently program a, uh, a demonstration. Right here with Turbo Snail Ops Codes Notepad Document, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so we are going to start off pretty simple. We are going to. Uh, right, geez. I am still not used to this, uh, so I will just make sure that's reset. So first, we are going to start off with a load A instruction. So that is uh, from least significant 001, which is load, and then we're going to do uh, one, two, three, four. As yeah. I, mm, binary doesn't come instinctually to me, which is pretty concerning considering I'm working in binary. But yeah, four, uh, and then we'll just save. And then next, let's do uh, probably addition. So we just add one there. And then we take that from the second location, which is going to be five. Uh, remember to actually change the address we're writing to, and put that in there. Uh, and then. Next, we're going to do a jump to address zero in the third thing. And that's actually it. This is going to run forever. Um, so now we go to address four, and then we figure out what numbers we want. Let's just do one for now. Uh, and then one in address five as well. So this is just going to go, it's going to load A first from uh, this one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so it's going to load A from this, put that into A, then take this, put that into B. Uh, oh, I forgot a step actually. Okay, so uh, we're going to go to uh, this one. No, this. Okay, so this is the third instruction, which was the jump. We're actually going to go to save A, which is right there. Always good to talk through your code before you actually start running it, just to make sure that it actually does what you want it to do. And then we go to number three, and then we do jump zero. There we go. So what it's going to do is it's going to load into the first register, it's going to add which loads from a specific register or from a specific memory location into register B, adds them together, saves that to A, then we're going to do save A to um, did I do that right? Yes, I did do that right. I Then we're going to save A into uh, memory location four, and then we're just going to jump back to the start. So it's gonna constantly save it. We can stop it whenever we want, and then we can start it back up again, and it's gonna keep on counting. So let's run this now. So you can see loads A, loads B, adds them together, saves it. I loads B again, or sorry, loads A again. Yeah, there it goes, loaded A, loads B, uh, saves, yeah, there, it actually goes pretty fast. Um, so yeah, there, loads A again, loads B, adds, saves. There, it goes pretty fast. So, I'm gonna play with fire here, and I am going to turn this down a bit, which is probably a very bad idea, but here we go. Here we go, load A, that's good. Load B, add, save, jump, load A, load B, add, save. Oh my gosh, this works. All right, let's continue overclocking. Uh, let's go down to five ticks, which is scary because that's the exact same as the offset. Oh yeah, that's fast. Okay, okay, that is, yeah, that's broken. Okay, that, Let's just uh, yeah, let's move it back up here for testing purposes, and then let's just kill everything with fire. All right, and erase all of that, and that never happened. So yeah, this can go decently fast. Of course, we're gonna have to mess with the timings here. Uh, probably mess with this guy the most. Uh, so I'll I'll just keep dropping this until everything breaks. Um, and then I'll mess with those timings and then try and drop this again until it breaks. I want to get down to like here or here, uh, but honestly, this is already a lot faster than any computer I've ever built. Um, 
and then we can just slowly reduce this until it's equal to this. Um, so if you forget, this is the, uh, the cycle, this is the gap from uh, rising edge to falling edge plus the internal delay, which is three ticks. So actually this is going at 26, uh, which is uh, one every 6.5 or 0.65 seconds. Uh, and then this is the rising edge monostable detector, which gives the ping to say uh, the registers and uh, the RAM so that it can actually save properly because otherwise it would break because it needs exactly one tick input. And this is just the offset from there just so that the signals can settle before it gives basically a picture, right? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and get that to work. Uh, next episode, I should be doing this fun stuff and this fun stuff. Oh boy, it's, I, I don't know exactly how to work on this. I'm not exactly sure how to record this stuff either, because it's kind of annoying to have to get a quiet time in the house to be able to do this, but yeah, I'll try and work on this as much as possible. Um, but yeah, and then we'll get device sharing, I'll get Vidgut in here, and I will plug our computers together and see if they can share messages, which should be interesting. So yeah, um, that's this 10th episode, yay! Um, yeah, that's everything. Have, have fun with life. I don't know. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.